Pancakes or waffles? So in this video, <laughs> I'm going to take a look at some of the numbers of Palantir and see if I can draw some conclusions based on that. It's been in the news. It's been a pretty hot stock. It's had a big decline. And uh, I'm going to try to see if I can have a semi slightly informed opinion about it. So in general, I don't invest in growth stocks, mainly because I focus on selling uh, puts and calls. And in order to have proper collateral for my liking, I like to invest in profitable companies, meaning, you know, companies that have already had a, have an established business, but companies that have already scaled up and properties that and companies that I know that will last for a long time and have a really good chance of recovering if they do have a downturn. But growth stocks are very risky in nature and uh, they may never reach profitability and they could have a steep decline and go to zero in a fairly short order. So therefore, I don't use them, but I'd like to still look at them. So today I'm going to look at Palantir. I'm going to use stockanalysis.com. It's a free website for analyzing stocks. I like it the best, so that's what I'm, I use, uh, mainly because it's very informative. It's got a lot of numbers on there, everything you really need to, uh, everything you really need. Some of the numbers may be off, but uh, if you need confirmation for the numbers, you can also always go into uh, sec.gov. That's S-E-C dot G-O-V. In fact, why don't I show you the website? So go to S-E-C dot G-O-V and then you can just search for, you know, Palantir Technologies. And then over here on the list, the, on the list. On the left, you'll see a list that contains some of their latest filings. Um, you can see that they recently f filed their 13F. And then uh, you can read over their 10Q that was filed on May 9th. And you can find out any kind of relevant information straight from the source. Um, we can take a brief look just to see. I haven't actually looked at the 10Q, but... Here's their revenue line, for example. Oh, you can't see it on because it's so far out to the right, you can't see it. But anyways, you can go to the web, this website, sec.gov, and find out all the information straight from the source. Okay, so back to excuse me, back to the um, stockanalysis.com. Um, you can see here that the market capitalization of the company is 17 billion. And it only revenues 1.65 billion. Okay, so which puts it at a price to sales of um, 10.33. However, they are holding some cash. The reason, the, a really quick way of finding that out is by subtracting the enterprise value of from the market cap and then you find out how much cash they're actually holding. And they're holding a couple billion of cash, which is a lot for this company. And that tells me that they have, they have a lot of survivability power. They're not levered to the guilt, to the guts, to their neck, to the eyeballs. <laughs> so I know that they're gonna be able to survive for a while. Now, the most important metric for growth companies, is, of course, revenue. Uh, because they've only been public for four years, I'm going to go to the quarterly revenue chart here. And it looks like they have a steady climb up, which is not bad. Um, they've doubled their revenue since 2019. So that's pretty cool. And then operating, where's the operating income? Operating income only minus 39. It's not bad. It's decreasing. Um, I mean, it's increasing. And then the other important statistic that I like to look at is shares outstanding. So you can see that they're issuing shares. And since 2019, they've issued about four times as many shares as their revenues increased, which is not a good sign for me personally. I don't like to see that. Um, but operating margins are you know, getting more and more favorable. So that's, that's all right. 
if we go to the statistics, we can see that um, the price to sales, uh, price to EVs, 8.94. So that's not bad. And then working capital of 2.26 billion. So that's quite a bit. I mean, they're holding a little bit of debt and a lot of cash, cash and cash equivalents. So they have a ton of staying power. I mean, if you go to the overview here, you'll see that um, they've dropped all the way from $35 a share, which was probably overvalued. I like to look at just this little overall graphic to find out you know, what the revenue versus earning is on any given year. So you can see that revenue has been increasing and 2020 they actually lost quite a bit of money i mean they lost as much money as they revenued right so that's that's quite a bit i mean i made 1.2 billion dollars more than palantir did in 2000 in 2020 <laughs> so that's that um now because of this staying power and increasing revenue i think that Palantir actually has a decent shot at um, getting to the profitability territory within the next few years and um, increase the revenue but because of the trends. But there's some things that worry me about the company. Like, for example, that um, it's very government-specific, right? And if government is your biggest, basically your biggest uh, client, I don't know what the list of their clients look like, but I by their own words they're making software for the government um, and the government doesn't really care that much about the price which worries me a little bit because they should be already profitable i mean given that they're they're dealing with a government that's their client um i don't know the ins and outs but it just kind of worries me it's been years and they haven't been profitable even though you know they're in this kind of like stage where the products should be pretty refined you know they've been a public company for a while most notably by the way i think this company is getting a lot of news because it's headed by um some well-known individuals if we go to let's see where it is where does it say the names of the people? I forget. And maybe it's in the overview. No, it's not. But Peter Thiel is one of the main guys in the company. Um, and he's a very, very well-known entrepreneur, especially in the Bay Area. And... Um, I can't find the names of the guys. I forget where they're listed. And along with some other names that are pretty well known. And just, I think people have a lot of belief in the guy because he's been so successful in the past. And uh, so they're probably giving the stock a little bit of a premium, more premium than it deserves. Oh, one important statistic I think that I, I like to look at is um, the revenue growth year over year so you can see that there's a little bit of decrease in the rate of growth right so if we look at the quarterly um revenue growth year, you can see that the rate of increasing the rate of growth is actually slowing down a little bit which is a worrying sign but it's not slowing down that much to where it's like oh no this isn't going to happen you know i do i think it's a buy well I think at 831, it probably actually is a bit of a buy. It definitely was not at $25, but now that it's come down so much, it actually might have some potential. I don't think that they're going to go out of business. That's for sure. I think this company is probably going to stay alive for the, at least the next 10 years. Um, but the problem is like how much growth potential do I have? I think the most that this company can reasonably get in today's dollars is probably like 50 to 100 billion dollar company um, until it starts to like plateau. Look, I could be wrong. Obviously, they could come up with new. So they already have, I think, two software, main software products from what I understand. 
Foundry and um, what was the other one? Gotham, maybe. Oh, I think it's about here. There we go. Yeah, so Palantir has um, Foundry in Gotham right here. And here's the list of all the key executives. So Peter Thiel, you know, Alexander Karp, etc. Stephen Cohen. So I think because of the names, people have a lot of trust that everything's going to be all right. It's still above its IPO price at 725 which is worth noting. Um, would I buy it? No, it's not my type of stock, but do I think it's a deal? And if you're into that stuff, if you're into growth stocks, I actually think at this price, it it, it makes sense. Um, when I first started looking at this company today, I actually wanted to be a bit bearish about it because um, I'm just not a growth stock investor. But after looking at some of their numbers and their growth, I think that it could it looks like it could grind higher all the way to like 15 over the next couple of years but this 35 to 25 dollar range i think is way out of the question um definitely not a buyer at those levels okay well those are my thoughts on palantir if you want me to cover a stock and just kind of give it my thoughts um go through the numbers real quick just like i did today let me know what stock you want me to look at i'll look at any stock any any publicly traded stock in the market and i'll do it just comment on it down below and um, I'll try to get to as many of them, probably all of them, because there aren't that many people commenting. So um, give me a company and I'll give you my opinion of where I think it should be, whether it's a buy or not, and um, any other comments I have about it. All right, that'll be a short video. I'll end it right here. Till next time, peace out.